<clears throat> so welcome to Thursday night teaching from me again. Sean did a really awesome job last week, so it's going to be kind of hard to follow up, but um, when I made this, I didn't put together this message to be a step on toes message or a, anything like that, that was kind of going to kind of feel like it at first, but what I made it for was to help. So. If there's something that you disagree with or anything like that, just hang in there because I promise, I promise you'll agree with the point. So tonight I will be talking about <clears throat> tonight I will be talking about Sean. I won't be talking about Sean, but Eric, go. Oh yeah. Technical difficulties, please stand by. <laughs> you gotta do it twice sometimes, or it doesn't go over to the page it's supposed to turn. Have you tried plug, unplugging it and plugging it back in? We're saying with wards pop up. Yeah, I think he did that. There we go. No. Boom. Next time there's a connect button on the bottom of it, hit that. Okay. I thought I did hit that. Anyway, so now, welcome to the Sunday School. So, tonight's lesson will be about... Rewards. Who likes rewards? Oh, that's right. Melanie's getting a bunch today. I didn't know it was her birthday. <laughs> bunch of rewards. You got a rewards for being born. You didn't have to do anything. You just have to hang in there and you keep getting rewards for it. So, But, stealing from Sean from last week a little bit, because I kind of like the question thing. It's pop quiz time. I want to hear what everybody thinks about it. So, everyone sins every day. Are we supposed to? No, we're not supposed to, right? So, to prove that, Jesus in John 5.14, afterward Jesus found himself in the temple and said to him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more. Sin no more. And John 8.11 she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Further in John 8, 34, Jesus answered him, Verily, verily, I say to you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Are we supposed to be servants of sin? No. <coughs> Romans 6. A lot of Romans 6. So what shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. For how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey not the lust thereof. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? God forbid again. Being made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. We want to be righteous and not sinful. Alright, good idea. That way it turns with me, right? <clears throat> Alright, all sins are created equal. Hmm. Hmm. So verily I say unto you, this is Mark 3, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith whosoever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. So one, you can be forgiven of almost any sin except for blasphemy. So blasphemy has to be different. If they're different, they're not equal. First John, chapter 5. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, 
and there is a sin not unto death. If there is a sin unto death, and a sin not unto death, there are different sins. If one is unforgivable, and some are, sins are different. And there's a couple of other ones in there, but we get the point. It's two ones it mentions, if they're different, they can't be the same. We are not saved by works. Who here thinks we're saved by works? Mm, oh yeah, Sean did the little loophole. We're not saved by our works, but we're saved by Jesus' works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I would say yeah, probably right on that one. So, who has, this is 2 Timothy 1, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Titus 3, 4, we just went over a bunch of these in Sunday school. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by the works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 2, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then Matthew 7 says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And he shall say, And then I will profess unto him, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So, no, works aren't going aren't gonna to do it there. Not going to do it for you. Once saved, always saved. Ooh. Touchy one. Like I said, I didn't make this step on toes, but we're going through here. Romans 11. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, you're on a tree broken off, now you're not. And thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou will say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. That was Paul. It's one of his, I think it's a little tricky in talking, but it keeps going on. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. So if you're part of a tree, I would say you're going to make it if you're part of God's tree. If you're broken off, so how can you say, well, once you're on the tree, you're always there. No, you're not. Well, then, if you're not on the tree, you were never there to begin with. Yes, you were. You just said that you can't be broken off from a part of to begin with. So, 2 Peter 2 goes on to say, For if after they escape pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. The latter end is worse than the beginning. <laughs> So for it had better be for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. So now it's like you know the holy commandment now. You know it, you got it. And then you turn from it. So there's one you're in, now you're out again. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. So don't go back to wall vomit and wallowing. First Corinthians, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. You're not going to fall unless you've climbed up or been somewhere higher. And Hebrews 3, Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. If you're with God, you can't be separated from Him, departing from the God. God's not going to separate you. God will do nothing to take your salvation from you. You will. You're the only one that can do that. So you kind of agree with what you're saved. Yeah, there's nothing that can happen to you, not unless you want it to, unless you make it. 
So, just to be clear, let's mix these all together here. Once you're saved, you got it. And no matter what you do, you'll go to heaven. It doesn't matter if you act Christian or do the works of God, because we're not saved by works anyway. Everyone sins every day anyways, and all sins are created equal. So yeah, let's all go be Christians together. No, that's what, that kind of thinking and those statements are what got us to the state we're in today. Go back that right one more time. Once you are saved, <clears throat> you got it, and no matter what you do, you'll go to heaven. It doesn't matter if you act Christian or do the works of God, because we are not saved by works anyway. Everyone sins every day anyways, and all sins are created equal. So yeah, enjoy. We're all going to make it, right? Wrong. That is not the way you get there. Wrong. It is the recipe for disaster. It's the recipe that you're not supposed to be cooking. You're not supposed to make that. It's not going to taste very good going on. It's not going to taste good to God, so why would God eat it, so to speak, right? So, we're not saved by works. Let's look at that part of the ingredient a little bit closer tonight. So, it's true. We are not saved by works. 100%. 100% agree with that. Works aren't going to get you. You're going to be the best person ever. If you're Buddhist, too bad. So, so why are works important? It's James 2, 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and any one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, to be ye warmed and filled, Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? It's kind of like someone comes to you hungry and poor, and you're like, hey, have a good day, go with God, and then you leave. You didn't help them. God's telling you, you didn't help them by doing that. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe. Well, I believe in God. Yeah, so do the Satan. So do the devils. You think that's going to get you there? Just your belief alone? Uh, and tremble. So they're afraid of him. You should be too, if that was your line of thinking. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Again. And in James 2. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? God gave him a test. God asked of him, sacrifice your son. Because he said, I really don't want to, but okay, God's commanding it. Come on, son. And right before he did it, everybody knows what happened. God stopped it and gave him a ram to do that. And because he was willing to sacrifice his son, God said, well, then through your seed, my son that I'm going to sacrifice will come. Because you know what that's like. You know what it's like to have to give up your son for something greater. So, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works his was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. So likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers, and had sent them out another way. She kind of hid the angels back then. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. It's two different places where it says this. So why are works important? The rewards of it, right? What are we working for? What do we get for all of this? So I've heard it said a lot, like it doesn't matter as long as I get there. As long as I make it to heaven is all that matters. Because then I'll be with Jesus and that'll be my reward. It's true. And I agree. But... God's got a lot of work to do. He doesn't need a million floor sweepers up there. He needs people to work down here. Saying that's like saying, oh, okay, well, I'll do the bare minimum just enough to get in. And you tell God that. Be like, hey, I want in. Is there like something small I could do for it? And that's not really how it works. But because people will go out and they're willing to sacrifice and they're willing to do a great works, 
God will, would he not reward them greater? You think those people who are going out drinking and partying and not living for God, who turn to it right at the end and get the same rewards as people who have been chastised, persecuted, kicked out of places, beaten in the name of God? I don't think so. Not even one bit. You say God is justified and God is a righteous God and a just God. Well, do you know what justice means? Do you know what just means there? Weigh the scales. So the rewards. Matthew 5. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So you are rewarded for this. But Matthew 6. But when thou dost alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand is doing, that thine alms may be in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret, himself shall he reward openly. So if God sees you worshiping, knows you're worshiping, you're not doing it for the glory and glamour of it, you get an open reward. Luke 6, Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. So reward, reward, reward. Luke 6 also, And if you lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. How many of you guys, how many of you guys ever lent money to somebody? And then when they paid you back, thanked them for that. Like, thank you for paying me back the money I lent you. Not one, right? And that's exactly what he's saying right here. But love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. Colossians 3. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not unto men knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. It doesn't matter who you are, God doesn't care. He's not judging you by your name, your stature, your status. He's judging you by your works. For ye had compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully, this is Hebrews 10, the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. So you can actually be confident that you're getting your reward. That's not a bad thing. For working for the rewards, God finds no fault in you wanting rewards in heaven and doing works for them. You know, you're doing it for God. You're not asking for anything back. You're not wanting anything back. God knows, and God is happily willing to give you all these things. Second John. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not the things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. So if you receive a full reward, that would also imply that there are non-full rewards. So this one's telling you to strive for the full reward. And here we get into that a little bit. The different rewards. Different rewards. Different rewards. So, look at these pictures. Take them all in a little bit. They're going to come into play here. 1 Corinthians 3, 6. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth in anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. So you can plant a seed and water it, but if God doesn't want to grow, it's not going to. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. So, how he buildeth, take heed to that. Attention to these pictures. We got the planting and the watering. Now we're moving on. For what other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ? No one's building on anything but Jesus Christ in this you know, they can try, and it'll fail, and it'll fall. But if you build on Jesus, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, 
Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So, if you're both saved here, even saved by the fire, but some people's works don't burn up in the fire. Look at gold, silver, rubies, gems, diamonds. Do they burn in fire and melt? No, none of them melt in fire. Gold will melt, but it will harden and turn right back into gold. Silver will too. Wood, hay, stubble. What happens when you catch those on fire? They're smoking, they're gone. So, all of our works, everything we do here is going to be thrown in a big furnace. Everything. And what we did that was worthy of it, we'll receive rewards for those. What we do that didn't do anything and burned up, we won't receive rewards, but we get saved by the fire or through the fire. So, if you say that all sins or all works are created equal and God doesn't care, and that, you know, just because some dude got saved right there and on his deathbed, supposedly, and goes to heaven, and you think that he gets the same reward as, like, Elijah or Paul, James, any of the other ones, insanely wrong. Like, you don't think that all their works, like, you can put them under any fire you want to. They're going nowhere. We're talking about them today. Ghana's deathbed, he might have just made it. He had a lot of hay and stubble that got burned up. But through the burning up, he was saved from it. We are going to be punished for our sins, all of us. Don't believe me? Revelations 11. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks, be thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroyeth the earth. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his according as his work shall be. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So will you be able to claim your rewards? And what have you done to get the rewards? And if not, what would you like to do? And what can you do to get you some rewards in heaven for it? I want to be there and I want us all to have a whole bunch of awesome stuff to be there. Everyone's going to be happy. I'm not arguing that at all. But... I want rewards, I guess. I think we should all strive for the rewards. Any questions on that? Thank you.